uh, to publish it because yeah, the previous one was missing. I, there are several missing. I, I've been holding off on publishing for to be sure that there wasn't something sensitive. So I will publish, absolutely. Recording will be published. Okay. 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 So, are you live? Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Today is 24th of February. And we have a few, just a few topics on the agenda. So most likely it will be a really short meeting. So news, now we have Jenkins Contributor Summit. Um, so Mark, if you would like to summarize it. Yeah, so, so we started yesterday with a two hour session, 90 minutes of status presentation as noted there by various officers and SIG leaders. Uh, then we've been running tracks all day today and the tracks will continue tomorrow. They are commonly a one or two hour session where interested people gather together under the guidance of a, a track leader and discuss and brainstorm and try to prepare an idea for what next step should be for the Jenkins project. We'll then present those tomorrow in a two hour Zoom session, just like the session was on Tuesday. So we won't do it as a webinar because we want the facility of doing lots of interaction with the people that are participating. Uh, we will record it and the, the recording will then be published. Recording for the first session, the opening session has already been published. Okay, thank you. So if you're interested to just to join uh, the section, uh, the sessions uh, tomorrow. And if you want to find them, uh, the two seven calendar and uh, the sessions are listed there. Um, are yes, we please. planning to do retrospective on this yes, contributor? I, yes, absolutely. I'm just I'm I was very nervous and didn't schedule the retrospective immediately after the summit. I'll likely do an online retrospective next week, encouraging people to share their insights and what we could do better next time. Yes, yeah, be, because that's the first time that we do it this way, right? And so. Yeah, and there were a number of things that we, we will do better if we do this, this format again. It was, yeah, several things to learn. So next year, all metrics all the time? <laughs> oh, 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 wait a sec. The, the guy who didn't want to do the, the contribution channels thing. I like that. That's good. Yes, all metrics I, all the time. I had no issue with doing it. We just <laughs> never got around to organizing it. Fair enough. I think Fair enough. the main yes. problem was uh, is, uh, the participants number. Because we didn't promote the event too much, and yeah, basically, uh, many sessions go half empty. Right, right. That that's part of the big challenge. Part of the challenge here, right? We had we had fifty or sixty register, but only twenty five attended the first session. So, fifty percent drop off or better, and and that means we need to much more actively promote. That's still more than we had attend. I think the the contributor summit face to face in Belgium in twenty in early 2020, but this was online. It sh we should have been able to get many more people. Yeah. Okay, so let's hold the retrospective. Um, okay, so any other news? Oh, oh, we released a J Jenkins security advisory today and a and Jenkins 2.281 was delivered yesterday. And, and the security advisor was only on plugins. This, uh, this uh, oh, right, and the release canon 2.277.1. Yeah. Yeah, this is important because uh, we have a number of uh, uh, breaking changes uh, coming from the LCS. Uh, well, at least one change is known to be breaking at the moment. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, more feedback would be appreciated. Yes. Yeah, the, the, ch the change log pull request has been submitted. The upgrade grade pull request has not yet. Mm -hmm. 
of the verse. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So more Okay. So for trademark updates, uh, the key update is that uh, finally the Jenkins trademark uh, has been transferred uh, to the Continuous Delivery Foundation, and particularly to LF uh, uh, Charities uh, Limited. So basically, it's an organization holder for other Linux Foundation trademark. Uh, it was planned when we voted for transition to Continuous Delivery Foundation in 2018, but it took a while. Initially, yeah, there was uh, government shutdown in the United States, and then uh, it was expected to take a few more months, but yeah, a few years later, we finally have it. So what it means for us is that if you go to the Jenkins trademark uh, on Justin, you can see that uh, the Linux Foundation is uh, officially listed uh, as an owner of nine now. And uh, it means that we need to update our documentation uh, so that uh, we reflect that. Uh, and also the discussions about uh, the trademark usage policy, which we had. Uh, now it's uh, fully effective. So I dropped uh, some content from here because uh, now I just refer uh, the Linux Foundation pages. I just have a question regarding the trademark. Uh, why is it the Linux Foundation charity? Is it like the only sub-organization that is a non-profit and the Linux Foundation is a for-profit organization? I mean, why? I'm, I'm just wondering why it's charities instead of just Linux Foundation. Mm, I'm not sure whether there is even an organization called the Linux Foundation, a registered one. Maybe yes, yes, there is. No. I have the document for the. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have document for the Linux Foundation for that. So I'm just wondering. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, try to check. For example, Kubernetes. Uh, and yeah, it's owned by the Linux Foundation. Which is yeah, it's an interesting uh, question. I can ask uh, Tracy about that. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can figure it out. So other changes, uh, yeah, trademark attribution changes. So basically all vendors and uh, users who properly reference Jenkins trademark expect to gradually migrate uh, to say that the Jenkins is a registered uh, trademark of the Linux Foundation. And uh, yeah, there is no deadline for that, but uh, the migration is needed. So if you work for a company which uh, has Jenkins references on its website, then you can uh, let uh, this company know that uh, they need an update. And yeah, also the reimbursement process will gradually move uh, to LFX. Uh, we currently have an account on LFX, yeah, but uh, the most of our money is still on SPI. So we need to, to eventually spend all money we have left on SPI, and then uh, we just close the account and say that uh, now uh, we use. Uh, let's see, the record is still broken. And yeah, after that, uh, we will be using uh, the uh, Linux Foundation crowdfunding platform. We will also have some money. No. Do we already have ideas about how to spend the money from the SPI? Because I know that from an infra standpoint, uh, we spend like $15 every month, but we probably not use that. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how much we have there. No, we have there quite a lot. A significant part of that is Google Summer of Code money because we didn't spend uh, money last year because uh, we traditionally spent them on uh, travel grants. And since there was no travel, we didn't spend basically any money. 
plus uh, there were some remnants from the previous years, uh, plus uh, there were some remnants from the common account. So if I recall correctly, there is around 12 uh, thousand at the moment. And there isn't a way to transfer that into community bridge. We have to actually expend it from SPI. Uh, we can uh, transfer that. Um, and actually I did uh, the transfer once when we were running community bridge. Mm. So yeah, the first payment you can see in the list is Jenkins Project SPI okay. made a donation uh, to the Linux Foundation. So basically this is how we funded uh, the community bridge uh, project uh, slide and was working on uh, JCASC uh, plugin for Visual Studio Code. And yes, we can uh, do transfer like that. Moreover, we can agree that uh, this transfer uh, won't be a subject for uh, additional fee. So for example, here you can see that we basically got 3,000. Um, and yeah, it's basically the case for the most of the transactions we have at the moment. Mm. So we could transfer money. Um, whether we should do that, um, no strong opinion, uh, because yeah, um, well, the crowdfunding platform is quite handy because it has expensive fiber backend. So to some extent it's more convenient than um, SPI, but at the same time SPI reimbursement process is also quite straightforward. So I wouldn't uh, move the money until we know that we need to move the money. Yeah. Thank you. Something. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. If so, the preference it reduces our overhead costs if we spend it directly from SPI. I think that's what you're indicating. No transfer fee if we spend it directly, or now there's no transfer fee. Yeah, there is no transfer fee for us. So okay. we can uh, move uh, uh, the entire budget without uh, spending uh, money. Uh, the real problem is that we need to, to spend money on something else because otherwise it uh, doesn't make much sense. So right now, if you take a look at our budget breakdown, yeah, it's totally artificial, but yeah, we have some reservation for bug bounty. I uh, think to Daniel about that because yeah, we have some security schwag. Right now, this money are not required. Development sponsorship, documentation sponsorship, marketing, meetups, mentorship, and travel. But yeah, all of this is just uh, formal targets and basically be eligible to spend money as we wish. All right. but, yeah. We can just buy Olivier more banners to sit behind him. Well, so, so. <laughs> One of the challenges for Google Summer of Code, if we select, or if a project is selected that involves Kubernetes, the student will need access to com computational resources to allow them to run a Kubernetes cluster. Um, I would assume that might be something we would choose to fund from here, or is that not a good candidate for this kind of funding? It's something we can do that. Uh, we can do. Moreover, it's documented uh, in JEP8. Uh, which is uh, about uh, JSOC funding. So we can use JSOC mon uh, money to sponsor JSOC infrastructure. Mm. But at the same time, it's commonly easier to uh, get credits. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you really want, you can do that. Well, well and, and we certainly, we in cases where the student could get credits, we, we prefer those with Google season of docs uh, this, neither of the two contributors could get credits. They'd already used them, et cetera. And, mm -hmm. and so we ended up funding it from a donor company. Mm -hmm. I'm certain uh, DigitalOcean would probably be, sorry, I can't say I'm certain. Uh, DigitalOcean has a Kubernetes offering and they're very open source friendly for this kind of work. So I, am, I would suspect they would be willing to give credit out for that. Excellent, okay, thanks Gavin. So the, the bigger challenge there is making sure we ask the right people and understand their who, who we need to ask in those organizations for those donations. Good. Yeah. So usually it's not a problem if you need a Kubernetes cluster. If you need a spe specific Kubernetes cluster, for example, if you want uh, to document the Kubernetes on DigitalOcean, then yeah, you will have to use DigitalOcean. 
mm-hmm. the options. Yeah, it's just one option to get sponsorship, not the dozens. Yeah, and you know they might even be willing to donate in that regard as long as they get some uh, info in the documentation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah uh, right. I was also thinking um, about like we we should be looking into spending more on hosting stuff as well because we do have the the problem where um, when sponsorships go away, then the like the infra goes away as well, and we should have some, you know, support, some stuff that is a little bit more static that we don't have to worry about going away at any point. Yeah. So the problem for us is uh, the scale. Yeah. Because um, the computing infrastructure is sponsored, yes. and uh, yeah, when we talk about computer infrastructure, we talk about uh, ten plus k per month. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, this is much higher than what we get as a uh, cash flow in donations. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we would not, I mean, we would not be able to use, yeah, to do that credit for infra anyway. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not talking about like replace it whole, all, but there are some things like the, uh, I think you set up, you started setting up a status page. So something like that, which would we want to be outside of our normal cluster, that would just be independent status. That might be something that's a low cost that's good for spending. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. So it gives us some flexibility. If we need, let's say, five hundred dollars run a service elsewhere, we can do that. You don't need to spend time asking uh, SPF or whatever for five hundred dollars. But yeah, basically uh, that's what we can afford with uh, using this money. So we we just have never really six thousand dollars on stickers and socks. We have never been uh, promoting uh, donations because uh, if you start promoting donations, we can actually uh, get much better numbers. Yeah. For example, here you can just take a look at the projects. Yeah, and I did reach out to Tracy about getting an API for donations so that we can start, we could embed it into our site. Uh, mm-hmm. Has that discussion hasn't gone anything anywhere, and I haven't followed up to actually get the information, but I have started the discussion because it would be nice to actually highlight the people that do donate. Mm-hmm. But do do we explain why we use a donation? Because, for instance we don't get enough money for it for for the infrastructure stuff but maybe if it's just for stickers or what i mean if it's for support uh, people to attend conferences maybe yeah that that donate link is awesome because if you go to donate without a slash it goes to the wiki which turns around and redirects you back to donate with a slash mm-hmm. which is on this site but um yeah i submitted pull request but it uh, wasn't merged because uh, there were other rules sure. proposed and finally it got yeah. stuck forever yeah, um, but I like to like I would like to make sure that we uh, very clearly say which companies are donating infra if we can, which companies are donating money, which don- which ones are donating, whatever else we want to donate because it seems like the right thing to do whenever someone gives us stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think we did want to talk at some point about fixing up that friends of Jenkins plugins. Yeah. We definitely should discuss that. Uh, so yeah, but the donation flow is basically operational. We got some donations through that. Obviously, we could get more if we start taking like, promotion, etc. But at the moment, we don't have any use for it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. so some organizations are quite um, active uh, with that. Uh, so you can see that uh, yeah. So some organizations just uh, get a bunch of small foundation uh, donations. And yeah, you can see, for example, Hikard, they just have a uh, page somewhere. So uh, these uh, donations, and you can see that they, they actually get quite a lot of small ones. So yeah, I think that kind of stuff is bigger in JavaScript for all the, the small projects that exist mm-hmm. yeah if we really need money we can also set up github sponsors which is more convenient to some people 
uh, so we can have additional account there. But again, so far there was no demand in that. In order to spend money, basically you need uh, somebody spending working time to find ways to spend money, right? And uh, yeah, while well, it's totally possible right now, we just uh, do not uh, invest too much time in uh, organizing these community programs. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking where they uh, have donations. Probably under contribute. Yeah, maybe. Or not. Nope. Anyway, somehow they get quite a lot of donations. Oh, it's a button on the far right. It's very super clear. Oh, yeah. Well, we can do the same. Why would anyone need download? Let's yeah. Put donate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you hover over the don't download button, it says, ha, trick to you, donate. <laughs> See, but yeah, so if we really needed money, yes, it could be an option. Right now, thanks to all the sponsors, we don't need uh, that much uh, cash flow. So we can uh, be quite lazy with it. At the same time, yeah, we really need to set up outreach programs because I, I can imagine that we just get community. Oops. Yeah, but I mean, like, if if we do go with, uh, you know, one of the the site search stuff for docs, it would be nice to indicate them that there as well as their own requirement. You know, uh, we have we do have some Microsoft uh, sponsorship. They would be nice to put in there. You know. So. Hey, we just. Uh... Yeah, still, it's facilitating development. It's uh, not uh, contract development. Uh, but yeah, some open source organizations also use it for contract development. Yeah. <sighs> Oops. So since it hasn't been reported uh, for several months, uh, yeah, this page isn't very visible, right? I guess not. I think we could also, I mean, that's a docs thing, but we should also have a, a bot that goes through and checks all the links pretty often. Yeah, I believe uh, Zbigniew uh, did a patch for that for CI at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So on that note, uh, uh -huh. every month or every week, I don't know exactly the cadence, uh, Matrix, when they do their governance meeting, they make sure that they post it, uh, the recording to Twitter and they make a blog post. Uh, so, you know, I know we have this with this doc, but I'm wondering if we wanna make a blog post every time the uh, governance meeting happens that includes the agenda, the notes from that specific meeting and the video to go with it. Mm. Um, the, the reason I'm thinking that is on my infinitely growing to-do list, I want to make a, I'm trying to make a bot that will read the blog RSS feed and post it to the chat channels and probably to Twitter at the same time for every new post. So it would be nice to have one of these that says, you know, new governance meeting minutes. Mm. Uh, well, we could. I'm not sure about uh, having it for every meeting. Maybe it could be a monthly summary or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Mm. I think theirs is more like a podcast podcast style, though. So theirs is probably more interesting to promote every time. I mm. all admit I've never watched their recording. I've just seen their thing every month. Yeah, what I used to do, I was putting uh, summaries uh, to the developer mailing list. Yeah. Uh, so, but I wouldn't say that it was uh, quite popular as well in terms of responses from others. Yeah, you can find that, for example, uh, well, this meeting didn't happen. Not a good example. Uh, but yeah, for example, here. No. Okay, so uh, there are some uh, meetings where there is uh, uh, 
as Tom Maria touched. Yeah. Just throwing out the idea, though. I don't know if it's good or bad. We definitely are not uh, uh, active in terms of creating content right now. So if there are important decisions, it definitely makes sense uh, to create a blog post or if somebody just wants to write one, it's good, why not? It is. I, I don't know how much traffic the blog gets, but it is probably worthwhile to add one for getting, like showing how to test the latest LTS. Mm -hmm. Especially this one because it needs a lot more eyes. Oh, that's a good that's a good one. Let me that may be a, a good counter in addition to we talked about doing a contributor or a, a webinar next week on on the upcoming release and having a blog post about it would be a good idea as well. Good suggestion. So are you on the right accounts? No. Well, I should have access from uh, the, my personal one. Maybe something changed. Cuts and laughs. Let me check. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jenkins and Jenkins X. Okay. But you have. Wow. I never seen that actual active user thing work before. I've never had a site with traffic. Okay, I think there is nothing uh, really secret there. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah. I just, just forgot why it's under hearts and loves. Uh, but yeah. Here you can find, for example, content where what people are looking for. And yeah. So you get some information. And for blog. Uh, yeah, we can also. But this is people looking at it right now, not like actual hits. Because this is under uh, just real a time. Second, uh, uh, six days content. You want to go to behavior. Yeah, page views, the last uh, 30 minutes, last month. But yeah. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, we can uh, get this data, it's all available. But yeah, the summary that uh, you, the traffic to the blog is not that high and, uh, unless you have also promotion in the social media. And if you post on Twitter, post on LinkedIn, actually you get uh, quite a good traffic uh, to the blog post. Yep. That's why I want to make this the RSS bot, so. Yeah. And then also redirect it uh, to what else we have uh, to Reddit? So many referrals from localhost 888. Uh, sure. But yeah, just, I, just again, this is reports from real time. So this is in the last 30 minutes. This, so this just, just for, just fine for, I think, given the only one in the board to not have access to the Google Analytics right now. I think so. Because Ulrich yes. has access and uh, Alex as well. Yeah. This is something we can fix. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, definitely get some information from here. And yeah, I'm not sure I have access to the plugin site, by the way. So we don't use, we don't have Google Analytics on the plugin site. Yeah. Well, if needed, we can have one. So, but yeah, I agree with Gavin that any blog post, like announcing release candidate, announcing new LTS baseline, etc. All of that is helpful if someone has time to create uh, this content. Okay. Anything else? We launched, uh, Mark and I launched the, the POC for Agolia on plugins this week. 
I'm pretty excited about it. So. And if that is interested, there was a short demo at the previous uh, documentation track of the computer summit. So. Yes, Mark, could put the link later. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, on a different topic, um, I have, I has, I'll, <clears throat> sorry, I'll announce soon that we'll have to update the update center root certificate, uh, the update center certificate. <clears throat> I, I wrote a, a draft this afternoon. And so now I have to convert it to for Jenkins Radio website. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to, to write, to, to publish that, to publish it as a blog post and send it on the dev mailing list. Um, I don't have a date yet. I mean, we have a strong deadline beginning of April, mm -hmm. but um, I don't have, yeah. Yes, of course, uh, the downside is that uh, all the Jenkins versions, which don't have uh, the new certificate installed yet, won't be able to access the update center, right? Yes, mm -hmm. and so basically those are the version older than, uh, older than April 2018, so... So those are yeah, two years old versions. So anyway, I I mean, anyway, those version does not have access to the plugins uh, to the update center anyway because it's already too old. Um, the the okay, perfect. They can um, the, the, it, uh, but uh, they will just get the latest updates, which yeah. are most likely incompatible with today versions. <laughs> right. Uh, and from a dev, uh, plugin developer point of view, that's also a good time to remind people to, to update the based the version uh, for their plugin. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, otherwise I'm not expecting any major um, downtime. Okay, so yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah. Since it's 2018, it should be really to this most for all active for Jenkins users. Well, never say never. Okay, quick update on the LFX tools. So, in addition uh, to um, uh, crowdfunding, we currently use mentorship, though it's not actively used. But if somebody wants to have a profile configured, so you can create your project ideas there and invite uh, participants. Uh, we also have um, a few other prototypes. What I wanted uh, to reference now, there is community events. And this community events uh, basically uses a different platform. So it's not uh, meetup.com. Um, it's to again, I forget the name, but we should expect that at some point the next foundation encourages us uh, to move there. And most likely, we will move uh, the majority of meetups, uh, maybe except Jenkins Online Meetup, because Jenkins Online Meetup, uh, it really makes sense to keep it on meetup.com. And well, the rest of meetups are not really active anyway. So let's see. And another update, uh, mostly for security team, but uh, maybe for others, so that we've got access to Snake. So you can see this, well, terrible numbers. Uh, yeah, if you want, you can explore why. Uh, but uh, yeah, any, what I wanted to say that now we have access, um, including uh, Daniel uh, and the Wadek. Uh, uh, so they can also manage access for others if needed uh, through support requests. And uh, yeah, now we can uh, okay. I can fix it, but yeah, I have access. And I think that uh, it's not really helpful because yeah, we need to clean uh, it up before we really start uh, getting any benefit from the security stunts. So if somebody wants to get involved, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay. 
I guess I should have clicked on this button. It's a bit strange. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's the answer. Because before that, it was the same. So you click this link, you end up in Jira. You click this link, and uh, actually, the, you get it working. Now, just no. Okay. Anyway, you can see okay, almost one third well, of the vulnerabilities. Is there. <laughs> at the very least, it's good to be good at something, right? Yeah. We're the best at vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what else we have in tools? I, I we discussed easy CLA before, and it's something we also need to follow up on after the trademark transition, because uh, if you go to our uh, CLA, you can see that uh, this CLA is also tied to the SPI, mm. and uh, it basically brings up two questions. So first question is uh, what we actually want to do with uh, code ownership. Uh, because yeah, currently, yeah, this is basically a form uh, which is just confirms with you that you understand that it's MIT license and that uh, you confirm that you're eligible to contribute code on this license. Uh, and well, there is a lot of other words, but basically that's it. Mm. So we can just uh, modify uh, this one associated project of the Linux Foundation or whatever. We can update it to use Easy CLA. Um, we probably need to, uh, to talk to the Linux Foundation about the text to ensure that it's uh, what they commonly use. And after that, there would be also a question is what we do with uh, the existing uh, CLAs because we have a number of collected ones. So maybe we want to invite people to resign them um, with easy CLA. At the same time, um, well, I don't feel very strongly about that. So it can be a great old process. And yeah, currently, easy CLA has some magic integration with GitHub Actions so that we can automatically verify uh, CLA signatures. Uh, but Again, uh, it's rather a fancy feature that's something useful because uh, we don't have so many people who need to sign CLA. If you request every contributor to sign CLA, then yeah, of course, it would be a completely different story. But uh, in our case, we request only core maintainers and other people with sensitive permissions to sign it. So, I'm sure. But definitely easy CLA is much better than uh, uh, what we have now, especially in terms of corporate CLA, because the current process of corporate CLA, so that basically you have to create CLA PDF, uh, you, can, uh, you need to encrypt it, to submit to the Jenkins governance board, and the Jenkins governance board processes it and put, puts it here, which is of course doable, but at the same time, yeah, you can see how many companies we have listed here. Why do we need corporate CLA at all? It's anyone's uh, question right now, but uh, well, in principle, we could simplify this flow. I, I don't know if I've used Easy CLA specifically, but any of the other ones I've used in the past that are GitHub integrated are much slicker, much easier to use than this one. This one, I, yeah. I'm not even sure my CLA signature is actually valid anymore because I signed it when I was still at CloudBees. So, yeah. yeah. So in principle, we don't care too much about that. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. At some so point, I'm, uh, I'm totally questions. in favor and I'm totally in favor of switching to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I wanted to set it up at some point. Obviously, it depends on uh, whether and when I ha will have went wife for that. Um, but yeah, in principle, it's quite handy for us. Okay. 
and yeah, basically it's all common tools. There are a few others like dashboards and sites, etc. But yeah, all of it is uh, uh, not that used at the moment. Okay, so I tentatively put a roadmap review on the agenda, but taking timing, uh, we can uh, we should rather use uh, the tomorrow's contributor summit session. I like that. So do we have any other topics for today? None from me. Thanks everyone. And yep, I guess the next meeting is as usual in two weeks. Yeah. See you. That's all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.